even the righteousness of God, which is by faith of Jesus Christ unto all and upon all them that believe, for there is no difference. Once again, even the righteousness of God, which is by faith of Jesus Christ unto all, upon all them that believe, for there is no difference. So, we start with belief first. If you believe somebody, then you're going to follow whatever you believe, right? Now you believe this chair, you sit down, you sit down this chair, you believe that this chair is going to hold you up, so you sit down the chair, or you believe the chair will hold you up. If I come and tell you, Jay, don't go outside, there's some robbers outside. If you believe me, you're not going to go. But if you don't believe in that, oh, whatever, I'm going. Mm -hmm. That's why Jesus Christ, if you believe and have faith in him, yes, if you believe and accept him, he will bestow that righteousness on you because, yes, you believe who he is. But to remain in that righteousness, you must follow the commandments. You must follow everything he ordained and placed before you to remain in that righteousness. And I'm going to show you the scriptures that, that show us that and teach us that. Before we even go into that scripture, I want you to see for yourself Matthew 3.10. What happened when we don't follow? When we don't follow. What happened to everyone who don't produce fruits? Fruits, we're talking about fruits, is good fruits. Holiness, righteousness, love, fruits of the Spirit, the whole list. Obedience, all these things to God. And even obedience to your mom, your parents. And these are all in the commandment. If you want to live a long life, it says, Obey your mother and your father so that they may unto her may be long. This is one of the commandments with promises. All these things. And if we become unfruitful in our, in our life, this is what God says is going to happen. Matthew 3, verse 10. And now also the axe is laid unto the root of the tree. Therefore, every tree which bringeth not forth good fruit is hung down, being cut down, and cast into the fire. This, this coincides with what I spoke about earlier. The devil is going to a place of a torment and hell and destruction and the lake of fire. And like I said, if you want to follow the enemy and be disobedient and be rebel rebellious to God, then you are following suit, right? You're following him. You're going to end up the same place. And this confirmed to what I, what I said. Because the devil became unfruitful. God created him. He was, he was beautiful. He was above all the other angels. He was perfect until iniquity was found within him. Rebellion. He defied God. He went against God. He wanted to be God. You know? So all these things were found within him. So he was cast out. And all those who are rebellious to God and disobey God, he, he said that since you choose, since you don't choose me as your father, then the only father you have out there is the devil, because the devil lied from the beginning. He sinned from the beginning. Mm -hmm. He's a father to, unto all those people out there who's rebellious against God. And if you want to follow your father, then you want to then you want to lie in the same bed as your father. And it's simple as that. Right? Amen. 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 And the, second, the lake of fire is the second death because hell shall be consumed by the lake of fire. That's the second death. And the second death is was intended for the angel. The angels that would dis that disobey God and rebel against God and their leader, the devil, Lucifer. Romans 5 21. Um, that's a cool guy that told you that uh, a lot of people say that once we believe in Christ, that's it, we have righteousness, and that's all we need to do. We don't need to do nothing more once we believe. That's it. Well, the Bible teaches something different than that. You got it? This is what the scripture says. I'm going to read it twice so that I'll give you a little time to get it. We don't have it. That as sin hath reigned unto death, 
even so might grace, might grace reign through righteousness unto eternal life by Jesus Christ our Lord. Once again, that as sin hath reigned unto death. So if you sin, you rebel against God. He said the ultimate place, the ultimate destination for you is death. And death is going to be cast in the lake into hell, which is consumed by the lake of fire. That is, that is sin hath reigned unto death, even so might grace reign through righteousness unto eternal life by Jesus Christ our Lord. See, a lot of people use the scripture and say, yeah, I told you. Righteousness reign, reigns, reigns, um, reigns, um, reigns through grace, through the grace of God, and He bestow righteousness upon us. Yes, that's true, the scripture says that, but that's not the only thing the scripture says. Romans 6, go to the end of Romans 6. We just read from Romans 5. Now Romans 6. We're going to read it together, the whole thing. What shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? See, the same issues that they're dealing with back then, the same issues that's present even today in the church. And even right now, Paul is talking about it. Oh, God forbid. Now, how shall we that are dead to sin live any longer therein? If we say that we, we believe God and that we Jesus, Jesus Christ's death, we died with him, and we resurrected with him. Basically, when you say that you died with, with Christ, basically, you put yourself to death. It's no longer your will, but it's his will. And I live for him now. In modern, in modern day in terminology, we live for him. We no longer live for ourselves. Our own desire is no more. It's his will. Know you not that so many of us as were baptized under Jesus, unto Jesus Christ were baptized unto his death. Therefore we are buried with him by baptism unto death. That life as Christ was, was raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also shall walk in newness of life. Key word, walk in newness of life. Meaning everyday, uh, everyday obedience unto him. Every day we have to change our own, our old ways. You know? And he said that our heart. He said, when you don't even know our heart, our heart is desperately wicked. And each and every single day, God is going to show you a little thing of us in your heart. You something something even new. And then you submit that to him, surrender it unto him, and let him change you. You know? It's a, it's a one day at a time. For if we have been planted together in the likeness of his death, we shall be also in the likeness of his resurrection. Knowing this, that our old man is crucified with him, that the body of sin might be destroyed, that henceforth we should not serve sin. See, key word, serve sin. We not should be submitted to sin. If we are dead to sin, how is it people say that, yo, is it possible, is it possible to live a life without making a mistake when it comes to God? But if you, are you saying that you're going against everything that the whole body stands for? Because guess what? We don't, we're not walking according to our own strength no more because your body is a living temple. This is your body is where God dwells. The power of God resides within you himself. And it's not, you're not relying on your strength no more. It is he who empowers you to do all that he desires for you to do. And he's saying that you can live a life that's pleasing to him without, without compromising, without submitting yourself to disobedience. That's how our sin is, disobedience to God. Knowing this, that our old man is crucified with him, that the body of sin might be destroyed, that henceforth we should not serve him. Verse 7. For he that is dead is freed from sin. Now, if we be dead with Christ, we believe that we shall also live with him. Knowing that Christ, being raised from the dead, dies no more. Death had no more dominion over him. For in that he died. He died unto sin once, but in, in that he liveth. He liveth unto God. Likewise, reckon ye also yourself to be dead indeed unto sin, but alive unto God through Jesus Christ our Lord. Let not sin therefore reign in your mortal body, that you should obey it in the lust thereof. Key word, lust. He said a man is, uh, when a man sinned, they said they are driven away from the, driven to sin by their own lust. Lust, their own desire, what you want. It goes right back to your will. It's what you want. You no longer want to do what God wants, but it's your will. And you took our focus and our ship of God, it's about me now. I want to do this. This is what I want to do. You see? The minute you start, the minute you take a glance of God, that's when we start falling. That's all messing up. Okay, where am I now? 
Okay, 13. Neither yield your members as instrument of unrighteousness unto sin, but yield yourself unto God as those that are alive from the dead, and your members as instruments of righteousness unto God. For sin shall not have dominion over you, for you are not under the law, but under grace. What then? Shall we sin because we are under the law, but under grace? Sorry. Because we are not under the law, but under grace? God forbid. Know ye not that to whom you yield yourself servants to obey, his servant ye are to whom you obey, whether of sin unto death or of obedience unto righteousness. You see? Obedience unto righteousness. So you have to live a life of obedience if you, if you want to continue in that righteousness. Everything I spoke about earlier, you're reading it for yourself. You know? I said, you study to show yourself the proof of God. Study so that you will know what the foolishness that people's preaching out there is not, is not, is not in the Word. Most yes. of the stuff that people's teaching is from their own heart. Yeah. And want to use use the word and twist it to get you to get you to better their will, but not God's will. Mm. Study, read for yourself. That's why I love to teach and show y'all for yourself that you can stand a powerful man and a man and woman of God who effectively know to use this word. This is the sword. You can fight effectively with it. Study. Read 16 again. I love 16. No, you not that to whom you yield yourself servants to obey, his servants you are to whom you obey, whether of sin unto death or of obedience unto righteousness. But God be thanked that you were the servants of, of sin, but you have obeyed from the heart that form of doctrine which was delivered, we delivered you. Being then made free from sin, you became the servants of righteousness. I speak after the man of man because of the infirmity of your flesh. For as you have yielded your members' servants to uncleanness and to iniquity, unto iniquity, even so now yield your members' servants to righteousness and to holiness. The more you live and obey God and start fashioning your life or fashioning your life like Him, start thinking like He thinks, speak like He thinks, like He speaks, and walk as He walks, you will become holy in the sight. Holy, clean. Righteousness unto holiness. It's from step to step, from level to level. It also happen. You know, right away like that. Mm -hmm. But when, verse 20, but when you were the servant of sin, you were free from righteousness. What fruit had you then in those things where you are now ashamed? Basically, if you are a child of God, what pleasure you have in the things that you said you gave up? Why is it that we are going back? Is it, is it being me that we never truly gave all? We still held on to some things? I didn't really truly give up all. Mm -hmm. See, that's why you have to do a lot of soul seeking by the word. Use the word to penetrate your heart and make sure. Evaluate yourself every day. Every day you have to evaluate yourself. Every day. Twenty-two. But now being made free from sin and became servants to God, you have your fruit unto holiness and the end everlasting life. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Very short word, like I said. But you can live a life of righteousness, but you have to be a child of obedience. You have to be obedient to God. How you, how you know you will be in God? Read, study. Have that relationship with God. The way I'm speaking to you, this is how you speak to God. You don't need to go to God with no big words and no rehearsed prayers. No. He wants you to open your heart and speak to Him. He said He's your counselor. A counselor, if you go to some, you know, when, a counselor, when a counselor a counselor, you go to them for anything. Any little thing. It doesn't have to be bad. Good news. You speak to them, they counsel you, you know. Whatever it may be, speak to Him. He's there for you. He's always there. Just rely on him. Study. And let him teach you. You don't need to look to no man to teach you. You don't need to look to me to teach you. The same spirit that taught me and gave me these words to bring to you is the same spirit that abides in you. If you're a child of God, the same spirit will teach you and lead you into all truth. Rely on him. Don't look to man. Look to God. He's a jealous God. 
I don't want God taking me out because anybody looking putting me before God. <laughs> <laughs> you know? So look to God, study. We're here to help each other. Iron sharp and iron, that's what the Bible said. I'm here to help you, you're here to help me. I don't know everything. I know you don't know everything. But what I know, I share what you know you share. We build together and grow as one. Amen. Thank you, brothers and sisters. Amen. Thank you.